Hello, my dear student friends. I'm Dr. Ram Krishna, senior member of uh, chemistry faculty, Narayana Educational Institutions. Now, I'm going to discuss the questions of chemistry given in JE mains phase 1 series of exams going on and the paper what now I am discussing is the one that is conducted on 31st Jan January right so in this the questions what we are discussing are collected from the students of Narayana institutions who appeared for the exam so all the questions given are based on their memory right so there is every chance that the question pattern or the values given in the question or the options given in the question anything may be different from the original question so there might be few corrections but overall it will give clear picture about what questions have been asked, what talk, topics have been covered, which chapters have been covered and what is the uh, depth of the questions. Everything easily you can understand and this will definitely help you a lot. Okay. So now let us start the questions. Let us see the question number 1 that is in a non-polar solvent arrangement of missile what is a missile this is from the chapter surface chemistry and the topic collides right this is related to cleansing action of soap in which we studied that in a of course that is water is a polar solvent there but here the question is non-polar no problem but the soap mainly consists of R COO minus the soap mainly consists of sodium or potassium salts of fatty acids right when we, when we add soap to the water there because this is what is given in NCRT so based on that I am explaining this so all the this RCOO minus right this is hydrophilic part and this is hydrophobic part now this hydrophobic part so this is the hydrophobic part move away from the solvent hydrophilic part will be towards the solvent and the mesel is formed like this what is a mesel when many of these are CO minus above 100 molecules more than 100 molecules when uh, when they associate right above 100 molecules when they associate then what we get is missile ok so what we are getting here is a missile right so this is what missile so this is hydrophilic part this is hydrophobic part when they come closer like this they will form a spherical large molecule of colloidal size so the pattern should be this not this not this not this this should be the pattern so that a colloidal sized particle is formed okay i hope it is clear 
let's go to the next question here this is from the chapter chemical bonding molecular structure chemical bonding molecular structures it's based on the concept of hybridization right nh4 plus 4 sigma bonds no lone pairs so hybridization should be sp3 and it should be tetrahedral so it is nh4 plus is tetrahedral sp3 hybridization four sigma bonds no lone pairs second one is xcf4 xenon being xcf4 means four sigma bonds again but now what you have is two lone pairs because xenon is eighth group or rather 18th group so eight electrons you will have in the valence session out of eight four are paired um, with the fluorine bonded then you have four more that four more is nothing but two lone pairs four sigma and two lone pairs six hybrid orbitals that is sp3 d2 sp3 d2 geometry is octahedral but two of them is occupied by lone pair so what is this square planar so xcf4 square planar right third one sf4 In SF4 again there you have uh, one good advantage is that all given are 4 sigma bonds. The difference is only lone pair. Here there is no lone pair. Here you have 2 lone pairs. Now you have got sulfur is 16th group. 6 electrons in the valence session. 4 are paired. 2 are left. 2 means what? 1 lone pair. So it is what? 4 sigma plus 1 lone pair that is SP3D. Geometry is trigonal bipyramidal TBP but shape when it comes it will be sulfur four fluorines one lone pair this is what we call CSA right so SF4 is CSA Fourth one is obviously the leftover is T shape, but still let's see why is it T shape that also I will see BrCl3 bromine three sigma two lone pair. 4 plus 1 5 3 plus 2 is also 5 so again this is sp3d so this geometry is again tbp trigonal bipyramid but when it comes to shape now two equatorial positions right BRCL3 is like this. Okay. So, ammonium ion, tetrahedral, 
xenon tetrafluoride square planar sulfur tetrafluoride CSA BrCl3 P shape right everything every information is given here easily you can understand now let us move on to the third question Cu2 plus plus Ki to give A A, 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 A further gives B plus C this is a from D block elements this is from D block elements and also part of we will discuss also under redox reactions also we will discuss this the reaction is that Cu2 plus means you can take it as like copper sulfate where copper is in plus 2 state plus 2 Ki will give you CuI2 plus 2K plus charge balancing this is your A CuI2 further gets changed by redox this is a redox change to Cu2I2 plus once again Cu2I2 plus I2 so this is your B and this is your C but actually separately if I write this is Cu I2 once again 2 Cu I2 undergo redox change 2 Cu2 I2 plus I2 this is the overall reaction here copper is in plus 2 state here copper is in plus 1 state this is reduction here iodine is in minus 1 state here iodine is in 0 state so that is oxidation so this is a redox reaction so it is a part of d block as well as redox right let us go to the next question number 4 which transition in hydrogen atom have the same wavelength as 4 to 2 transition in helium ion this is about hydrogen spectrum based question in different energy levels we have these are the different transitions like this we have different transitions what is the wavelength for each transition for the emission the formula what we use is Rydberg's equation one by lambda is equal to r h into z square into one by n one square minus one by n two square this is a formula where z is the atomic number of hydrogen or hydrogen like species ok r is Rydberg's constant 109,677 cm n1 and n2 are the energy levels between which the transition is being taken place now for this given if you 1 by lambda for given hydrogen transition by 1 by lambda for given helium ion that if you write r is constant so it get cancelled in the ratio for hydrogen it is 1 into now 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square we have to find out that n1 and n2 value we have to find out divided by for helium it is given for helium z value is 2 right so it is 4 into 1 by 4 to 2 transition so it means 1 by 4 
1 by 2 square minus 1 by 4 square and these two are equal. Therefore, lambda in the hydrogen spectrum masked is equal to helium ion transition is given. Therefore, 1 by n 1 square minus 1 by n 2 square is equal to 4 into 1 by 4 minus 1 by 16 that is how much that 16 minus 4 12 by 16 into 4 otherwise we take 16 and do it anyhow so this is all if you do that wait a minute So it is 1 by 4 minus 1 by 16. By solving this what you will get is n1 is equal to 1, n2 is equal to 2. So they are, it is 2 to 1 transition. That is your answer. I hope all of you are able to understand. This is a detailed explanation given. Okay, so this is from the atomic structure hydrogen spectrum very basic question. Next question number 5. Now this is a simple stoichiometric reaction stoichiometer. This is a question from reaction stoichiometry where the reaction given is Zn plus 2 HCl gives ZnCl2 plus H2 gas. This is the given reaction. Stoichiometry rules if you apply from the balanced equation, 1 mole of zinc will give you 1 mole of hydrogen gas. 1 mole of zinc means what is the weight? At a gram, a gram atomic weight 64.5. So that means 64.5 grams of zinc will give you what? 1 mole of hydrogen gas, gram molar volume. What is the volume of gram molar, gram molar volume for hydrogen given? 22.7, 64.5. Both are given here. Very straightforward even gram molar volume value also you need not to remember that is given here 22.7 64.5 grams of zinc in the reaction will give you 22.7 liters of hydrogen gas then question asked is what zinc given is 11.5 grams 11.5 grams of zinc will give you what volume of hydrogen? So that volume of hydrogen now will be equal to what? 11.5 into 22.7 divided by 64.5. Upon solving, this nearly you will get it as around 4.05 liters. Okay, na? So simple straight question, simple stoichiometric calculations reaction based all values are given very straightforward question ok so all simple base level questions are only being asked so far whatever we have seen in every case it is only the basic level questions from every chapter that have been touched very simple very straightforward let us move on to next question oxidation state of phosphorus in hypophosphoric acid this is from P block nitrogen phosphorus 15th group oxo acid of phosphorus here one small difficulty in this question though the question is very simple basic level question only but one small difficulty in the question is to remember the formula of hypophosphoric acid what is hypophosphoric acid 
hypophosphoric acid is H4P2O6. The question asked is oxidation state of phosphorus. Straight calculation is that hydrogen oxidation state plus 1. Phosphorus we have to find 2x oxygen minus 2 is equal to 0. If you do so, you will get 2x is equal to 24. This is 12 minus 4. Okay. So, 2x is equal to what? You are getting it as 8. So, x is equal to this is your answer. Structure wise if you see so how many bonds that each phosphorus has? 5 bonds. PP bond is common for both. So that if you remove how many other bonds that it forms? 1, 2, 3 and 4 double one. So, total four bonds. This four bonds is nothing but its oxidation state like that also. I mean that is bonding parameter type. Calculation, stoichiometric calculation is this. Very simple. So, only thing is you should know the formula for hypophosphoric acid. So, this is the solution. The answer is four. Okay. So, this is from P block. So, every chapter is being covered. Now, let us go to the next question. Which of the following is or not method of concentration of ore? This is from the chapter metallurgy. In the extraction processes. In the metallurgy, for the extraction of a metal from the ore, we have three steps basically. First step is concentration of ore. Concentration of ore followed by extraction followed by purification of metal in the extraction again we have uh, different steps but question asked is about concentration of ore Concentration of ore depending on the nature of the ore, depending on the nature of the impurities, we have different methods. Froth float hydraulic washing. Hydraulic washing is concentration of ore. Hydraulic washing. In this, the impure ore is passed along with the water stream, a downward stream. Then, depending on the density of the ore and impurity, they will be separated. So, this is hydraulic washing is purification of ore. Second one is froth flotation. This is also for the purification of sulphide ores. Sulphide, so sulphide ores are particularly purified by froth flotation. Electrolysis. Electrolysis is not a method of purification of ore, not a method of concentration of ore. Electrolysis is a method by which metals like sodium, magnesium, potassium, aluminium, right? All these methods are extracted, all highly reactive metals, more reactive metals are extracted by electrolysis. So, electrolysis is not that and leaching. Leaching is, is a method by which Right? 
the ore, silver ore, gold, etc., can be, or even aluminium also, aluminium ore, bauxite, the bauxite ore is when uh, digested in sodium hydroxide, right? That is the process leaching that can be done. Then fifth, liquidation. Liquidation is for the purification of metal, not ore. So finally, the answer is electrolysis and liquidation are not electrolysis and liquidation are not the methods useful for purification of or concentration of ore purification or concentration of ore this is also what we call ore dressing right so the answers are these two it is a purely theoretical question so no no, no need of and it is 100 percent NCRT based right next this is a very good question Lead storage battery contains 38% sulfuric acid by mass. They find the temperature at which liquid, liquid means basically here it is aqueous solution of sulfuric acid. Battery will freeze. So this is in electrochemistry lead acid battery reaction, lead acid battery the electrolyte what we use that is being given under what do you call colligative properties. So this is basically liquid solutions chapter, liquid solutions chapter, colligative properties, and depression in freezing point. Concept. depression in freezing point. So depression when what happens when a non-volatile non solute is added to a pure solvent the freezing point of solution is less than freezing point of freezing point of solution Okay. Freezing point of solution is less than that of pure solvent. This is a concept. Colligative properties. So then how do we find? Difference in freezing point delta Tf is equal to I into Kf into molality, where I is a van der factor, K, Kf is a molar depression constant, cryoscopic constant also what we call it and uh, small m is molality that is concentration term and I value and Kf value are given so it is very good that even I value, van der factor value is given normally it will not be given but here it is given right. So if you do that. Now, so delta Tf is equal to I 2.67, Kf given 1.86 Kelvin kg per mole, molality, what is molality? Number of moles that is weight by gram molecular weight into 1000 by weight of solvent. weight of solvent in grams. So that if you substitute what? Now given is what? 38 percent sulfuric acid by mass. So that is equal to 38 by 
gram molecular weight of sulfuric acid is 98 38 by 98 into 1000 by weight of solvent 38 percent means out of 100 38 grams is sulfuric acid so what is the weight of solvent that is water 100 minus 38 so that is what 62 so that you substitute here If you solve this, you will get something around 31.06. So, delta and question asked is at what temperature the liquid freeze? This is equal to what? Freezing point of delta Tf means what? Freezing point of solvent minus freezing point of solution what is the freezing point of solvent what is the solvent solvent is water what is the freezing point of water 0 degrees so it is 0 minus Tf solution so finally Tf solution is what? Tf solution is equal to This is your answer. Uh, delta Tf is equal to I into Kf into molality. Molality is what? This is how we determine. I value is given 2.67. Kf value is given 1.86. Molality is 38 by 98 into 1000 by 62. You will get 31.06. What is delta Tf? Freezing point of pure solvent minus freezing point of solution. So, freezing point of solvent. What is freezing point of solvent? 0. 0 minus freezing point of solution. That is what I wrote here. Is equal to 31.06. So, freezing point of solution is what? Minus 31.06 degrees Celsius. Okay. So, this is from the chapter liquid solutions, colligative properties, depression in freezing point concept. I hope it is clear. Good question. It is a very good question. Now, next. 0 0.6 gram X gas having a molecular weight 20 and 0 0.545 grams of gas Y having a molecular weight 45 are mixed together in a non-reacting mixture. If total pressure is 740 mm of mercury, then calculate the partial pressure of X. Okay. So, this is question from Geisha state based on Dalton's law. It is from the chapter. Geisha's state and Dalton's law. So, here what is Dalton's law? In a mixture of gases, P1 plus P2 plus P3 plus Pn is equal to P mixture. Sum of the partial pressures of all the gases in the mixture is equal to total pressure of the mixture. Okay. So, P1 is the partial pressure of gas 1, P2 is the partial pressure of gas 2 and all should be of course non-reactive because if they react then it will be no longer a perfect mixture. Now, also here what we have is partial pressure P gas is equal to mole fraction of gas 
इंटू पी टोटल और पी मिक्सर मोर फ्रैक्शन ऑफ द गैस इज वॉट नंबर ऑफ मोल्स ऑफ गैस डिवाइडेड बाय टोटल नंबर इंटू पी मिक्सर नंबर ऑफ मोल्स ऑफ गैस क्वेश्चन आज कर पार्शियल प्रेशर ऑफ गैस एक्स पार्शियल प्रेशर ऑफ गैस एक्स एन एक्स इज इक्वल टू वेट ऑफ एक्स डिवाइडेड बाय मॉलिकुलर वेट ऑफ एक्स व्हाट इज द वेट ऑफ एक्स गिवन 20 ग्राम्स एंड What is the molecular weight? Sorry, weight of X given is zero point six. Divided by molecular weight twenty. And N Y is equal to what? Similarly, if you do zero point four five by forty five. No P gas, so this is equal to what? Zero point six by twenty divided by zero point six by twenty plus total number of moles is equal to number of moles of gas X plus number of moles of gas Y, right? Zero point four five by forty five into Pressure of the mixture is given seven forty. This, if you calculate, you will get it as five fifty five mm. Okay, so this is your answer. Some of the partial pressures of the, all the gases in the mixture is equal to total pressure. Of the mixture, this is what Dalton's law. This is based on that. Okay, this so is again a simple question. Can I, I have? Now we can move to next question. That's question number ten. V two O five, V two O three, V two O four. This is again the question from D block, or even. Periodic classification properties. Periodic we can even explain it. Okay, better is D block only, right? It's about the acidic and basic nature of oxides. Same element. The rule is that for same element, with increase in oxidation state with increase in oxidation state of element in its oxides increase in oxidation state of elements in its oxides increases Acidic strength, or decreases basic strength. So here, increase in. oxidation state decreases basic strength this is what you have to understand now v2o5 is 
oxidation state of vanadium is plus 5 V2O3 oxidation state is plus 3 V2O4 plus 4 so oxidation state V2O5 is highest so basic strength of V2O3 greater than V2O4 greater than V2O5 ok straight question theoretical no calculation nothing increase in oxidation state increases acidic strength or decreases basic strength D block right so 10 questions are over now let us go to question number 11 the electronic configuration of neodymium in its plus 2 state this is periodic class electronic configuration we can take it in any chapter general question sorry it is a block neodymium atomic number 60 has the valency configuration of 4F4 6S2 valency configuration for neodymium therefore neodymium plus 2 has the configuration these two electrons are removed so 4F4 will be its configuration so answer is this Four F four is the answer. Straight question: Electronic configurations, neodymium, atomic number sixty. Atomic numbers, if we know, we know very well how to write the configuration. Four F four six S two. So the answer plus two two electrons when you remove, you have to do it remove from the six S. So the remaining is four F four. Okay. Now let's move on to question number twelve. Yeah, this is uh, again a physical chemistry part. 2.56 grams of a non-electrolyte solute. 2.56 grams is dissolved in one liter of solution, right? It has an osmotic pressure equal to four bar. So this is again from the chapter liquid solutions. Colligative properties and in that osmotic pressure is the concept. Yeah, how do we measure the osmotic pressure in liquid solutions? Osmotic pressure P is equal pi is equal to Van der factor I into C that is molar concentration S T. I is van der factor, okay, and it is a non electrolyte. Non electrolyte means. Non electrolyte means which do not undergo either association or dissociation. Okay. Therefore, your uh, Wendorf factor I is equal to 1. For a non electrolyte, Wendorf factor I is equal to 1. Okay. So, 1 into what is C? C is molarity.
molarity of solution molarity is what weight of solute let me write again gram molecular weight which we have to find out s given zero this s is nothing but r r means 0.083 temperature 300 four bar this is what m you have to find out so this m if you calculate that is what you have to calculate and uh, the value of m you will get it as 16 so the answer is this okay so this is from the chapter liquid solutions colligate to properties osmotic pressure this is a formula to determine to calculate the osmotic pressure Van't Hoff factor is equal to one for non-electrolyte because it will not undergo either association or dissociation. C is molar concentration, that is molarity. Molarity is weight by gram molecular weight into. Oh, sorry. Here uh, it is given anyhow one liter, right? So number of moles is what you are writing zero point zero eighty three. Molarity is Weight 2.56 divided by molecular weight into 1 by volume in liter. What is the volume given? One liter. Okay. So this is what one I wrote. So this is 2.56 by m. This is what I wrote here. Okay. 2.56 by m. 2.56 by m. Molarity. 0.083 into 300. Now you calculate m. You will get it like this. Okay. So this is from the chapter liquid solutions. Everything is very clearly explained here. Very highly useful to you. I hope you are able to follow. Let's move on to the next question number 13. This is from the inorganic part. Arrange the following isoelectronic species in there. In uh, Order of their radius means increasing order and decreasing order. Anything because here the question in the original question it they might have mentioned increasing order or decreasing order, okay? But here it is missing. As I told, this is based on the memory. So increasing order or decreasing order, which is actually asked the student, but have not remembered. So the question is given like this. So given is first of all. All given are isoelectronic. All given are isoelectronic. Isoelectronic means same number of electrons. K plus has eighteen electrons. Calcium two plus has uh, all has eighteen electrons. In uh, isoelectronic species, with increase in negative charge or decrease in
पॉजिटिव चार्ज साइज इंक्रीजेस साइज इंक्रीजेस देर फॉर यर दी ऑर्डर इज ऑर्डर ऑफ साइज इज एज इट इज यू कैन राइट के प्लस लेस देन सी ए टू प्लस वन सेकेंड सॉरी CA2 plus has highest charge, so it should have least size. What we wrote? Increase in negative charge, decrease in positive charge, increases the size. Decrease in positive charge. Calcium ion has highest positive charge, and positive charge is decreased to K plus. So the size of CA2 plus less than K plus less than. next negative charge who is having less negative charge chloride less than obviously the next is sulfide because here electrons are removed so effective nuclear charge will be here z effective highest z effective and here least z effective higher the new effective nuclear charge smaller is its size lower the effective nuclear lower the effective nuclear charge larger is its size so this is the explanation very simple straight forward question from periodic classification on the concept of ionic radius okay next question number 14 it is chemical equilibrium it is from the chapter chemical equilibrium its kpkc calculations and based on the relation kp is equal to kc into rt par delta n based on that formula kp is equal to kc into rt par delta n where delta n is sigma number of total number of moles of product gases sigma n of product all right again Minus sigma n of reactant gases. So here, if you see SO two plus half O two gives SO three. So here, first of all, delta n is equal to how many moles of products you have on the right side? Product side one minus. And the reactant said, "How much you have? One mole of sulfur dioxide, half mole of oxygen. So, so 
So delta n is equal to what? Minus half. Now what is given Kp? Kp is equal to what? X into n power minus 12 is equal to Kc 5 into 10 power minus 12 or 1 by 12 is given right T 27 that is 300 Kelvin right into R into T R 1 by 12 and T is 300 so I will write Three hundred by twelve to the power minus one by two. Okay, and if you solve all this, this value of x is what you have to find out. Ten power minus twelve, ten power minus twelve cancel. So what you will get is x is equal to. 5 into 300 by 12 right this if you that means the square root of uh, 300 by 12 r into t r is 1 by 12 t is 300 273 plus 27 right so all that if you do you will get x value is equal to 1 that is your answer ok na right straight formula kp kc relation kp is equal to kc into rt r is 3 r is 1 by 12 t is 300 to the power delta n delta n is minus half right so this is from chemical equilibrium let's go to question number 15 determine delta h not r this is thermodynamics thermochemistry and more we can say it as S law ok so in this what is given is half Cl2 to give Cl minus this is given is this is the reaction first half Cl2 once again again I will write half Cl2 gas means what is happening the chlorine molecule dissociates to give chlorine atoms chlorine molecule Cl2 dissociate to give 2 Cl that is what but given is half Cl2 so you will get only one chlorine And so the what is basically what is happening bond dissociation this is delta H1 your delta H1 is what is given minus 2 bond enthalpy bond dissociation bond enthalpy negative means bond dissociation enthalpy positive 240 kilojoule per mole then chlorine to what chlorine gas to electron gain enthalpy of chlorine
this is delta h2 delta h2 is electron gain enthalpy how much is given minus 350 right and this chloride gas chloride in the gaseous state when dissolved in water gets hydrated hydration here the enthalpy changes delta h3 what do you get Cl minus aqueous so delta h3 is what minus 360 hydration enthalpy is exothermic now what is hesla delta here we wrote it is based on the hesla what is hesla delta h1 plus delta h2 plus delta h3 is equal to delta h right so what are the values of uh, delta h1 240 right and uh, what is delta h2 minus 350 right so if you write that 240 right and uh, what is the next 350 minus 360 if you do so the value is minus 590 so your answer is delta h is equal to all three that you have to add 240 minus this is what Tesla says what Tesla says the net enthalpy change in the overall reaction is equal to some of the energy changes that takes place in each step of the process reaction overall enthalpy change this is delta H delta H is equal to delta H1 plus delta H2 plus delta H3 240 minus 350 minus 360 what you will get is 590 590 kilojoule per mole so your answer is this ok na next this is thermochemistry Hesla. so almost now we have seen all the questions mainly from physical chemistry and some of them are also from inorganic chemistry still we didn't get any question from organic nope possibly next few questions will definitely be from organic part question number 16 this question number 16 compound of cobalt 2 plus and dissolution in water gas pink colored octahedral compound so this is from the chapter coordination chemistry and structure of complexes structure of complexes CO2 plus in aqua solution what do you get hexa aqua plus which is pink colored complex so this is this is pink colored complex right hexa aqua cobalt 2 which upon reaction with chloride this actually reaction is with or chloride will give you COCl4 2 minus tetrachloro cobaltate 2 which is blue in color right shape of 
z so you are octahedral complex this is your x which and reaction with chloride gives blue colored complex this is y and uh, shape of this is z so shape is chlorine being a weak fill ligand it is inner orbital complex so it is sp3 tetrahedral so the answer for this is tetrahedral that is a complex tetrahedral complex cocl4 2 minus okay na cobalt 2 plus in aqueous solution exact for cobalt it pink color reacts with chloride will give you tetrachloro cobalt it blue colored shape of this hybridization sp3 shape is tetrahedral so this is tetrahedral okay next 18th question yeah now we got organic so far we have we haven't get organic questions this is a trans addition alkenes and in this based on stereochemistry means geometrical isomerism cis form is converted into trans form cis isomer converted into trans isomer you can see for the given alkene then which is the here bromine ccl4 alkali koh nh2 and sodamide bromine ccl4 last one is palladium lindlas catalyst this is birch reduction and this is lindlas catalyst this is again lindlas catalyst but here you are you have nh3 as well as lindlas catalyst which is not possible and here only elimination and lindlas catalyst is for cis and uh, birch reduction is for trans okay cis to change to trans so one should be this and the other one is first you have the addition of bromine ccl4 so what happens is this is a cis form bromine ccl4 trans addition followed by alkali koh and nh2 strong base dehydrogenation okay what is going to take place dehydrogenation hydrogen and halogen success removed so what you will get in two moles here what you will get will be c triple bond c ph ch3 
this is what you are going to get. I will write this again. Right? Now, for this, in NH3. Now that it is trans addition. This is NaNH2 is a specific reagent for Trans addition. So, okay. So, what is your answer? First, Br two CCl four. Second, alkalic KOH and NH two strong base dehydrogenation. Followed by NH three birth reduction. So, your answer is first option sequence you have to identify. I hope this is the sequence of reactions. Addition of Br, bromine followed by dehydrogenation both 2HBr minus 2HBr here. Right? This HBr, this those two are removed. Right? Followed by and NH3, birth reduction, trans addition. You will get this. Right? Now let us move on to question number 19. Which artificial sugar have highest sweetness value? This is from the chapter Chemistry in Everyday Life. Okay? Given is aspartame, saccharine, sucralose, and allitin. Right? This is purely memory based. In the NCRT textbook, we have the values given from the values order that we have to write. If you take as per term, this is 100 times sweeter to cane sugar. Saccharine, 550 times sweeter to cane sugar. Sucralose 600 times sweeter. Halitame 2000 times. Okay. So, the answer is very clear. Highest sweetness value. So, this is the answer straight memory based you will find those values in NCRD from that we have to answer this. So, those who are very good in uh, going through NCRD word to word line to line they can perfectly answer this. Okay? So, let us go for question number 20 from aromatic compounds. In how many of the following reactions aromatic amine is formed? So, here aromatic amine in this case aromatic amine is not formed. In this case aromatic amine is formed and this is also aromatic amine is formed right because this is bromine NaOH this is Hartman bromide where you will get primary amine you will get CH2 NH2 is what you will get here. Here nitro is directly NH2 and lithium aluminum hydride CO NH2 is reduced to NH2 and this is of course dilute sulfuric acid that is not possible. So, here how many of the following reactions means two reactions. This is Hartman bromide reaction where you will get CH2 NH2. Here nitro is directly reduced to NH2. Lithium aluminum hydride reduces MID to amine, CONH2 to NH2. 
So these two C and D, two reactions. C and D. Okay, na? Straight question, simple. But only thing is, you should know all the reactions, reduction reactions of amines. These are the two. This is the question number 20. Question number 21. This is from aldehydes and ketones. Okay. In this, uh, the final product is what is given propanol right propanol plus methanol propanol plus methanol what happens in presence of sodium hydroxide condensation right OCH CH2 OH ok then what happens dehydration because here upon heating what happens dehydration so what do you get the dehydrated product double bond CH2 this is all condensation reactions total right double bond CH2 now what sodium cyanide NaCN what do you get CN CN is added where to the CH2 so what happens CH2 CN and here what CH double bond O right now further is what hydrolysis COOH hydrolysis I will write it here with a different marker so that this CH2CN will become CH2COOH so this is chiral so finally product is what you are getting I will write here this is what you are getting ok now so what is a final product is optically active yes here you have this is chiral center Chiral center and optically active. Final product is racemic mixture and release. Yes, here this being a chiral, you will get both plus and minus D and L. Both you will get because this is being chiral, you will get both D and L. So it is a racemic mixture and it also react with NH3 what do you have is COOH so COOH will react with what NHCO3 produces what question uh, releases gas what is the gas that is released carbon dioxide COOH is reacts so finally the answer is second option final product is a racemic mixture and releases gas with NHCH because of COOH group ok na right now let us go to question number 22 a protein with 
molar mass 70,000 units um, hydrolysis gives amino acid which amino acid will be obtained from the following from the four options that this is not required that is not required for us that is only an additional information what did that give hydrolysis gives amino acid and hydrolysis the amino acid obtained is protein hydrolysis protein hydrolysis the amino acid obtained is always alpha amino acid in the four options the alpha amino acid what you have is only second option so it is a straight no more explanation straight away it is protein hydrolysis alpha amino acid that means nh2 and cooh should be on same carbon right so the only answer the only option available is question number 2 i mean sorry the option number 2 so it is the key is should be option 2 okay so now we discussed 22 questions actual questions will be 30 questions but as uh, in the beginning we already told that it is memory based our students could remember more accurately only up to 22 questions so is the reason that here we are able to present only 22 questions now in this session after the final je mains question papers are released by nta then the exact paper of 30 questions will be available then we can come with more accuracy for all other questions but now this definitely will be helpful for all of you to understand the pattern of the questions model of the questions standard of the questions topics covered subtopics covered accordingly you can prepare for all of this okay so this i sincerely hope that all of you able to use it properly wish you good luck all of you okay thank you very much